Hey guys, it's Tom here, and today we're talking about another house plant that I love, and it's Syndapsis trubii. So these house plants are kind of rare, uncommon, not popular. Pick your pick. They're not particularly rare. They're not excessively difficult to come by, but they're not necessarily easy to find either. The good news is there's only two at the moment, variety is available, which is the Moonlight, which you can see here, and the Dark Form, which you can see here. Um, are they easy house plants? Kind of, sort of, maybe. It depends, I suppose is a better answer. I think they're quite straightforward. They're not excessively complicated. They're pretty low maintenance. Yeah, I, I think they're okay. Are they beginner plants? Maybe? I don't know. They do have a couple of weaknesses. You do need to be careful with them or you will lose them. And okay, so which is best and how to grow them? They can be allowed to trail, which I prefer. I like this. There's, I've got so many plants that are on moss sticks and stuff like that. And I just, I want a bit of trailing sometimes. So these make great trailing plants. They don't grow very fast. If they're on a moss stick, they don't grow particularly faster. What's the point almost? So I like the fact it trails are on shelves and they just hang down. They look great. I love it. So trailing is fine and you can also grow them up a moss stick. Potentially, um, from what I've heard and what I've seen other people have done, if you had them on a, a moss pole or coconut core, whatever you want to call them, um, the leaves can get bet, uh, bigger as they climb up the pole. But it takes a while because they're so slow growing. So is it worth that? That's, that's your call. That's something you need to decide. But they're very versatile and you've got the choice, which is always a good thing. Um, which is best, moonlight or dark form? No, um, I have a preference for the dark form. I love it. I love It's more structural. The moonlight is dainty. It's got nice variegation. It's pretty to look at. Aesthetically, it's great. It's really nice to look at. But the dark form just has something about it. I just, oof, I love it. Um, I really like it and it's not because it's more expensive it did cost more it is possibly at least early on it was definitely rarer than this one but nowadays i think they are mm, close this is probably still a little bit more common but this is catching up it's, it's going to be there it's going to get there so the fact that they're quite slow growing i'd say is their biggest weakness in terms of what people might be expecting from them they look like pothos plants they are actually syndapsis which is a completely different species and they are indoors a little bit slower growing than pothos plants which obviously are much more common possibly much more famous much more popular um so when you get one of these you might be expecting a similar kind of growth but it, it, it is slower side by side there's no contest pothos will always win syndapsis is second place that doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't get them though that's not a bad it's not reason not to buy them but it's just something to bear in mind let's talk about the care then let's move on and talk about what they need to actually grow i was never planning to hold them for the whole video so i put them down i hope that's okay you can see them here you can just look at them i'll give you some more footage so you can check them out but yeah really beautiful house plants so what do they need let's start with the light let's start with light let's go from the beginning so what do they want they want good light really simple <sighs> They're not, they don't like low light, so avoid that. You're going to end up with issues. Um, long vines with no leaves are the classic symptom of low light. So just don't do it. Just, just don't bother. Just skip that completely. They are slow growing. Don't make it any worse for yourself. So they want somewhere which is good light levels. They can put up with some morning sun and some evening sun as well. Um, both of these plants get evening sun and they are fine. There's no burn marks, anything like that. So it's absolutely fine. They do struggle in intense midday sort of sunshine. It's too much. It is too intense for them and they can burn. I had, I did an experiment. I had them there for a little while and yeah, they were getting scorched on the edge of the leaves, which I don't, I can't show you right now because it was so bad. I cut them off. So if you can't see the scorch marks, but no, no, no direct sunlight unless it's very early in the morning or late at night. Water can be a problem with these plants. And I think this is why most people say they lose their plants um, because of watering issues. In particular, too much overwatering, basically. You do, it's essential. I, I can't stress that enough. It's not a case of, oh, don't worry about it. it just don't overwater them. 
make sure that the soil is almost either completely dried out or just almost there. Um, you may want to even invest in a one of those water meters. Actually, I bought one of those. I'll show it to you. You know, one of these um, to help you out. Just just until you get the hang of what this plant likes. If you overwater it, you're going to get root rot, and they drop leaves. Kind of not. This is the problem. They never drop leaves. If you've got a healthy plant and it's well looked after, you maybe get one or two yellow leaves a year. It's very, very unusual for it to drop leaves, which is a good thing. If you overwater them, though, the leaves are going to come off. They're going to go yellow and you're going to have problems. That's mild overwatering. If you go a little bit too far beyond mild to like moderate or heavy overwatering, you're going to lose the plant. The plant just rots. So you do. it's one thing I would say of all the care needs that it needs for this plant, the watering is something you need to get spot on. So when in doubt, water less. So if you think it doesn't need watering, maybe not, give it a few more days. Just don't risk it. Feeding once a month, once every two months. They're not excessively heavy uh, feeders. You don't need to go crazy with that. Balanced everyday houseplant fertilizer is absolutely fine. They don't need anything specific. You can do it less than two months if you if you, you know if you get about it they're just they're not hungry they don't produce a huge amount of growth anyway so they don't need a huge amount of feed to fuel non-existent growth um so yeah don't worry about too much about that um they're not fussy basically in terms of humidity again very similar they're not too fussy they can put up with a lot of different conditions without too much issues in their native habitat they are from rainforests and tropical jungles so they are used to high humidity and they probably prefer that but in my experience, brown tips are really uncommon. This one has, of all, this entire plant has one tiny brown tip that hasn't had any others. All the other leaves are absolutely fine. So I'm wondering if this is actually to do with humidity and maybe it's just to do with a burn or, or, or some sort of watermark or something. But yeah, in my experience, humidity has not been a problem and they just are very, very adaptable in that regard. So you shouldn't have to provide anything additional to help them out. I've switched them over now, so you can have a look at the dark form while I'm chatting away. Every time I do one of these videos, there seems to be a little flying insect always buzzing around. So I am sorry if it's getting distracting and off it keeps appearing. It's just a little moth. Anyway, temperature. Let's talk about temperature. So I feel like temperature is possibly the key to get in a decent level of growth. And like I said earlier in the video, you're not gonna get much. They are slow growing plants, but they do like it warm. And I mean warm. These are really warm loving plants. Um, they're from really warm locations. Some days in their native habitat, it gets to 35 degrees. This happened last time as well. I don't know the Fahrenheit conversion. So I will, yes, yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. If you're into that Fahrenheit. <laughs> um, yeah, so they like it warm. I'm not saying you need to provide that, by the way. I'm not saying you need to go crazy, but the warmer, the better. So the warmest spot in your house, they're going to love that. And that could be a clue to avoid cold temperatures. They really struggle in really, really cold temperatures. Um, so in winter, you need to keep them close to you um, in your living spaces. You don't want them in an unheated guest room that you never go in. And it's just cold. You don't want them in conservatories or outbuildings. You, you want to keep them close to you. They are warm, loving plants. And you won't get growth unless, I need to check this, I've forgotten, but there's a, there's a, I think it's 21 degrees, which again is this much Fahrenheit, is what you need for growth. If it's below that, the plant doesn't go dormant, well it does, it basically goes, it's still functional, but it doesn't produce new leaves and vines if the temperature tends to drop below that. So for a lot of people in a normal sized home, they might only get that temperature for a month or two a year when it's their summer. Um, obviously it's not true for everyone, but the warmer it is, the more likely it is you're gonna get good growth. And because they're so slow growing, that is a, definitely a good thing. Warmer the better. Okay, so potting mediums. What do they like? They are part of the Aresia family, so an aeroid mix is perfect. They want that. No, they don't want that. Um, they prefer it. They like it. You'll probably run into less problems using it, but it's not essential. So if you're using something else, you're, you're going to be all right, probably, maybe, potentially. I don't know. I don't know what you're using, but the key is this. This is what you do need to be aware of. Um, I mentioned earlier, overwatering is their biggest 
possible threat and their weakness. And too much water is going to cause root rot. They don't like it. So you need to try and help yourself. And if you use a free draining mix, water is not going to be held excessively into the pot and medium. It's going to drain out. It's just not going to be held because there's less space. There's more air in there, less space for water to be held by whatever you're using. Propagation, very simple, very straightforward to do. Um, like any of these vining plants, pothos, syndapsis, all of these plants are very similar. You cut on the node. I'd like to show you, but it's not going to really show properly here. So I'll put some footage in so you can have a look. But basically, you just want to cut between the nodes. As you can see, there's nodes on the, on the vines. You just cut between them so you have ideally one leaf and a bit of stem and a node. That's, that's the most important things you need. Then it just goes into a jar or vase of water. You can put them straight into soil if you wanted. Some people use lecker, uh, sphagnum, sphagnum moss. All of those things have a reasonably high success rate for the cutting to root. Okay, so let's talk about problems. This plan, I feel like, is an extreme. You either get an easygoing plant, and it just grows along happily and it doesn't really need much it's very low maintenance maybe a couple of yellow leaves every year which you pick off and chuck away maybe a little bit of tidying up a little bit of propagation it's low maintenance or the plant the leaves are coming off everywhere it's awful and it's all collapsing it seems to be one or the other basically so i feel like the problems are quite limited Brown tips, don't even get brown tips. There's not a single brown tip on this dark form. There was, obviously, I, earlier I showed you there was a brown tip on my moonlight, but just one. And they don't even need trimming off the ends because it's just so fine. And I don't provide any excessive humidity levels or anything like that. It, they're just so easy going. Look at that plant. Look at it. It's just so, I love the structure of it. <sighs> if only it grew faster. Oh. This plant seems to resist pests quite well. No thrips, aphids, mealybugs, all plants, all pests, sorry, that mm, not majority, but some of my house plants do experience. They seem quite strong and impervious to that. I'm not saying you wouldn't get those things. They could definitely be an issue. And I can imagine thrips being quite into these plants. And you don't want thrips. Um, if you do have a pest problem, comment below, tell me. I, ask me about it and I'll tell you how to deal with them. Because I can't tell you things that I haven't experienced really. I don't do that. I just tell you what I know and what I've learned and what I've seen, what I've, I've observed. I've had these plants about two years, by the way, I should point that out, both of these, but in roughly the same sort of time. Um, so I've had them about two years and they just haven't had those issues. And I don't have really a huge amount of problems I can talk about. I, they, I mean, there is slight damage to the leaves sometimes, but that's because the plant, I, I might need to zoom in to show you that, but um, the leaves are held for so long. You can have these leaves for years before they drop them. So it's naturally going to get damaged as you move it around and knock it or touch it, that kind of stuff. There's going to be damage occurring to the leaves over time. But it's not common. It's just that the leaves are so aged. Like most people will have damage to their house plants over time, and this is no different. But generally speaking, it's they're quite healthy and they they do well as house plants as long as you can meet the fundamentals, which I've covered way before in this video. So if you follow those, you should be all right. Just keep the plant happy and you're not gonna have any problems. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap up now. I've been talking about these plants for ages, it feels like, and you're probably bored of hearing about it. You want me to end the video and I'm gonna end it. And I just wanna say thank you very much for watching and thank you for your time, especially if you've made it to the very end of this video. Until next time, take care and see you soon.